A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Is wearing a wig an acceptable way for a married woman to cover her hair? The simple answer to that question is no. It is not an acceptable way for a woman to cover her hair. And the reason for my saying this is as follows. The basis that is usually quoted uh, in defense of this practice is the fact that the Mishnah, Masechet Shabbat, in the sixth parak of Masechet Shabbat, speaks of a pe'a nukhrif, something that, that a woman may wear uh, on Shabbat even, and uh, walk into the courtyard of her home wearing a pe'a nukhrif. This is in the context of things that a woman may or may not wear on Shabbat because of the possibility that if she walks into the a public domain to a Shut Harabim on Shabbat wearing certain things and she may remove them, take them off and show them to her friends or what have you, then she will end up carrying them in the street on Shabbat, which is Asur. And the Mishnah states that a, a woman may wear a Pe'an Ukhrith in the Haser, in the courtyard of her home, but not implying, not in the street. From this, some of the Mepharashim learned that wearing a wig for a married woman is permissible because they understood the term pe'anukhrith to refer to what we call a wig. This was the opinion, for example, of Rabbi Yoshua Boaz, the author of the well-known perush, or uh, additions and notes to the rif, called Shiltea Giburim, Masechet Shabbat, Perek Shishi. There he writes, based on this Mishnah, that it is permissible to wear a wig, as we see based on, in, in this Mishnah, that it is uh, such a thing as possible. This interpretation is incorrect because the term pe'a nukhrith does not refer to a wig. It refers to something quite different. We can understand this, first of all, by examining the term itself, pe'a nukhrith. The word pe'a in Hebrew means an end, a corner, or the border of something. In which case we must ask ourselves, why would a wig be referred to as a corner, or the end, or corner of something? Uh, or the border of something. This makes no sense. Something which is worn over one's head in the f fashion of a hat, but it has hair on top of it, why would that be referred to as a, a corner or an end or some such thing? The term Pe'anukhrith refers, as the Gra, the Gonu Vilna, writes in his Perush on this Mishnah, Masechet Shabbat, the term Pe'anukhrith refers to what we would call perhaps in English today a hairpiece, that is to say, a uh, a piece of s some material on which uh, hair has been attached, somehow glued or sewn on, and this is placed under the woman's head covering, says the gra, in, and so that it, some of it will stick out, because that is the normal way of things, that a woman who covers her hair does not cover all of her hair. Some of her hair is visible. This was always the norm in ancient times and down to the present day. This, is, this has been the practice of the vast majority of of righteous Jewish women who do cover their hair. Some of the hair is visible, but if a woman, for example, uh, suffers from a certain disease or condition whereby she has no hair or little hair, and, and therefore she is unhappy with the way she looks when she covers her hair because not much hair is sticking out, not much hair is visible, she takes such a, uh, an article, such a device, and places it under her scarf or head covering of some kind so that this will stick out and seem uh, as if it is her own hair. And therefore she will look like, like most women. She will look normal and uh, not unseemly or ugly or strange. This would also be relevant, for example, to a person uh, undergoing uh, chemotherapy or any, any other such uh, medical procedure or other medical conditions whereby there is hair loss is involved. So this is the concept of a pe'an nukhrit, says the gra. It is a, an additional piece of uh, material or some other uh, substance to which hair is attached, which the woman places under her hair covering, some of which sticks out, in order that she would look normal and uh, as most women do. If that's the case, and this is the only rational explanation for the term pe'a nukhrith, because otherwise the, word, the term pe'a makes no sense at all, but if it is a hairpiece that sticks out, then it is a corner, it's an end, it's something which sticks out of the, out of the hair covering and can well be referred to as a pe'a. 
just as the end of a field, uh, for example, is referred to as the pe'ah, that which is left at the end of the field for the poor to take for themselves, that is co called the pe'ah, there's something which sticks out that is, remains at the end. In this fashion we can understand the term pe'ah nukhrith. Uh, if that is the case, then uh, a wig has nothing at all to do with a pe'ah nukhrith. One might add that uh, Rabbi Yoshua Boaz, who was, it must be mentioned, a, a tremendous uh, Gaon Baptara, and uh, many of the standard um, tools that we find in the Gemara, such as Masoret Hashas and Torah Or, etc., were all printed on the Daf, are the result of his work when he was a very young man in his 20s, all of which show his tremendous uh, uh, knowledge and uh, and memory and uh, command of uh, the Torah sources. He lived in Italy in the uh, 16th century. He was born apparently the beginning of the 16th century. And this, would, would, this is a period known as the Renaissance period. And uh, as a result, it seems quite reasonable to assume that because he saw some Jewish women in Italy copying their non-Jewish counterparts. Women at that time in Italy were wearing wigs, etc., as a matter of course, certainly in high society. And it's possible, very possible, in fact, that uh, many Jewish women picked up this practice from their non-Jewish neighbors. And he felt he had to come up with some explanation, with some yishuv, some rationalization of this practice. But this is not uh, a, a true and healthy basis to uh, upturn uh, well-known halakha and uh, the source from the Mishnah is not at all uh, convincing and therefore is, is to be rejected. Is it not true that some authorities claim that wearing a wig is preferable since then not even one hair is visible? It is true, some have made this claim and the reason for making this claim is the fact that they are basing themselves on a statement in the Zohar which states that a woman must cover all of her hair so that not even one hair is visible. Visible. This is, of course, an extreme and uh, almost uh, irrational claim to make. It is quite impossible, essentially, for a woman to do so unless she, e A, shaves her head, which is, of course, a terrible and improper thing to do, or B, if she chooses to wear a wig, which is also an improper uh, course of action. Uh, because of the notion that of the Zohar, which is not at all based on any ancient source, all the ancient sources from the Mishnah, the Gemara, and the Rishonim all indicate clearly that uh, righteous Jewish women who covered their hair always had some hair showing. There are many sources to this effect, and I'm not going to go into them now in detail, but the fact is that the claim of the Zohar is, is a uh, immense and unnecessary uh, stringency and it is not practical, uh, essentially it is not, not doable at all uh, and the notion that we should uh, not observe this halakha correctly uh, in order to uh, live up to the, the false standard uh, placed before us by the Tsar is a, a good example of the negative impact of uh, certain mystical s streams of thinking uh, affecting uh, the halachic discourse within Am Yisrael. Is it better that a married woman wear a wig or not cover her hair at all? I have been asked this question on a number of occasions and uh, I have always answered that it is far better that a woman not cover her hair at all than wear a wig and my reason for saying this is twofold. A, we have just explained why wearing a wig is entirely unacceptable and in fact it usually uh, achieves the opposite purpose. That is to say, rather than uh, somehow reducing the uh, woman's uh, appeal and attractiveness uh, in the public uh, domain vis-a-vis uh, -vis others, the uh, wig usually does, uh, which is the aim of covering the hair, the wig usually achieves the opposite purpose. That is number one and therefore it is simply not uh, achieving the aim and the purpose of the halakha. Second of all, and this is perhaps even more serious, and that is uh, the fact that this encourages people to view halakha as something which does not make sense and need not make sense. The fact that uh, the Torah and the halakha are our system and in, uh, that they involve different practices and uh, 
conceptions which are totally irrational, which fly in the face of logic. That is to say, to claim that uh, a woman needs to cover her hair, but if she wears a wig which is several times more attractive than her own hair, that is fine. That is a clearly irrational and uh, intellectually dishonest approach to things. And also, if it's being done for the reason that we mentioned before, of not showing even one hair, that is also an unacceptable reason for wearing such a device. Therefore, this form of thinking leads to a warped and distorted understanding of halakha and leads people to, to accept that uh, there need be no connection between intellectual honesty and reality uh, and facts on, on the one hand and the Torah and halakha on the other hand and that is in fact a real and uh, major uh, issue with which we must deal. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.